Biggin Hill is a district in Greater London with a population of around 10,000. Historically, in the county of Kent, today it forms part of the southern eastern London borough of Bromley and located beyond London's urban sprawl. It is one of the highest points of Greater London, rising to over 210 metres above sea level. Its airport occupies land formerly used by the RAF Biggin Hill, one of the principal fighter bases protecting London from the German bombers during the Battle of Britain. Good morning viewers. It is another weekend, which means another walk. And as we are trapped in our own homes, another lockdown, uh, only allowed to exercise locally, I thought I'd do my local circular walk. So I'd like to bring you along with me and uh, we'll go and do seven miles around the perimeter of Biggin Hill uh, in Kent and hopefully see some nice sights, some views. It's quite a clear day, so we hopefully be able to see views of London uh, and surrounding North Downs. Uh, the route goes around, or sort of through the middle of Biggin Hill around now by the, by the cemetery here. And then it goes off into the fields and the woods, um, temporarily crosses main roads and then back into woodlands and scoops back round through Tatsfield and then up to what we know as Norheads, which used to be an old manor house up there and then back up to the top of Biggin Hill. So, across the valley twice. So, let's, uh, let's get going, shall we? Let's do it. So this wooded area that I'm in is called Mineshore. Um, there's a little bit of information about it here. Uh, I'll read it to you. The wooded area between Old Ty and the allotments is a remnant of semi-natural ancient woodland which Charles Darwin, the famous local naturalist, called his Big Woods, where he made many of his observations and conducted a number of experiments. So, these woods I'm walking through, there's only a fraction of it left, was explored by Charles Darwin. And who knows, some of the information that he gathered here may have been used to write his book on evolution. Uh, did some experiments here, which is pretty cool. Obviously, Charles Darwin's house is a stone's throw from here. If you watch my last video, you'll see me walk in to his house um, but yeah these woods are an ancient woodland um, it mentioned obviously uh, the woods are alongside Old Ty which is Old Ty Avenue Road here Ty is an old word meaning a plot of common land um, sort of like a recreation area which next to allotments here on the other side is our recreation ground so that would make sense why that is called Old Ty Avenue. See entrance to the recreation ground there. We're going to continue on this way. So I've come out now onto Old Ty Avenue, an avenue being a road lined with trees. And although they're not very big anymore probably was at one point massive trees along here and the face <laughs> so the path continues got big and hill circular walk sign there i'm actually going to take a little detour off of this and come back to this in a minute because there's a uh, something cool around the corner i want to show you and what i want to show you is this magnificent tree this is the big and hill cedar tree and this has been selected by a panel of experts to be one of London's 21 uh, outstanding trees of beauty, um, wildlife importance and it towers well over the houses and can be seen for quite a few miles around if you're looking in the right direction 
So this is quite an important tree. And this would have been in the estate of Apperfield when there was an Apperfield manor house here, uh, which, which really is the beginning of Biggin Hill. Pretty cool. Right, going back onto the path now. Rejoining the circular walk. Very muddy. Lovely. I've uh, come out of the path that runs alongside the horse fields um, and are now running along the back of Grubbs Ground Farm which is the residence of where the Blundells live. Now they used to be the milk farmers for the local area or the milk delivery service for the local area up until I think the early 2000s when they closed it for good. Um, they also run the local Biggin Hill Squash Club uh, so once all lockdown's over, uh, we, well, we normally go in there for a drink. Uh, a few of my friends play sport in there. So, um, it's still quite a big family in Biggin Hill. A lot of people know them. So, uh, it's a shame though they don't do the milk round anymore. But their garden backs onto this lovely field. Obviously at some point the track gets very muddy with all the weather we've had recently there was literally snow on the ground yesterday morning and today it looks like a spring morning Right, I've navigated all the styles and the poor signage and checked the map and I do believe I'm on the right track I should be heading past a uh, farm called Fole Farm and then through some woods called Pimlico Woods so if I go around this corner in a sec hopefully I have gone the right way if not I've got to backtrack and find another route so yeah I think I am on the right route this is Fole Farm here and this is basically a local farm that rescues animals um, they have open days through the summer and they also have a adoption service for dogs and cats, so you can take them home. But yeah, they've got, they've got pigs, horses, sheep, goats, ducks, chickens, pretty much everything you find in a farm, to be honest. And there's some cows over there. Now crossing over the field which joins back onto the field uh, that I was on earlier on that's telling you about the milk farm uh, and these are known as the strawberry fields because many years ago these were strawberry fields um, and I do believe that some of the strawberries from here many years ago were sold onto Wimbledon and when people were watching the tennis were uh, eating Strawberries from Biggin Hill. Alright, I'm getting now to the main road. I'm going to cross this, go down a road called St. Winifred's Road, uh, where I can pick up some woodland paths again.
Well, we are now heading from the top of Biggin Hill down to the valley, and this track is gently going downhill, and I'm pretty sure in a second the hill probably just drop. Uh, I know this side of the valley is quite steep, as I have lived in the valley and both at the top of the valley, and uh, yeah, walking home from places. Uh, when I was younger, I lived down the valley, yeah, the hills made it quite difficult. Right, so these woods here, uh, they join onto some woods that are in between the Grove and Sutherland Avenue of Biggin Hill. Sutherland being at the top, Grove being at the bottom. Uh, the woods are called Dead Man's Bank. Um, it's thought that there was a man found hanging in the woods, uh, lending its name to Dead Man's Bank. But other sort of parts through history and documents suggest that it's called Dead Man's Bank because of a field that was called Denman's Bottom, which was the field that ran through the bottom of the valley, which the grove was constructed on. And at this end of the woods, <clears throat> I don't know if it's still here, there are remains of bits and pieces. There is an old building here, which was an old scrapyard, uh, probably 40 years ago, maybe. I was just talking to a lady Along the path at the top, she said the man that used to run it was called, well, locally known as Snowy because he had a big white bushy beard, and white hair. Um, you can see here the sort of asbestos sheets here, which I think was the roof. I remember coming here when I was a kid and there was an actual structure here. Um, but there's new fences around it now. I don't know if someone else has bought the land and done it up, dug things out. There's old concrete sort of areas around there which buildings used to be sat on there's a well in there as well uh, but obviously it's can't go in there and have a look because it's private land now you can see in here now bits of old metal there's an old wheel there some bit of an axle from a car there as well more roofing and actually that garage that I've mentioned I believe it actually might be here a bit further down you can see some brickwork yeah it, here it is so when I was younger, this used to have a roof on it, which is now falling into despair. Uh, and I do remember there being an old camper van in there at one point. But yeah, there's nothing what it used to look like. All the wooden beams is down there on the floor, falling and rotted. So yeah, someone used to live down here. Now it's just woodland. Whew, that's a big hill. We've now crossed counties actually from Kent into Surrey. Uh, so Biggin Hill into Tatsfield, where we're gonna cut through Tatsfield over to the other side of Biggin Hill and then back down the valley and up the other side. Whew, there we go. Continue to walk up this hill. This uh, circular walk I'm doing is definitely not short of hills, but then again, living in Big and Hill, you kind of expect that. So every time you go up one, it means there's one to go down. So we are walking through Tatsville Green. Uh, got the shops behind me. There's a pond there and a local pub. Obviously, everything's shut at the moment. Um, and Gonna now walk back out of Tatsfield on the other side through a little area called Lusted, which I believe was like a small holdings many years ago with uh, like a farm on it, a few houses, things like that. So I reckon about halfway, so same again and then back home.
a little bit confusing in this part. There's nothing signposted. And there's little alleyways and walkways all over the place. So I'm just gonna take a wild guess and aim for the direction I think I need to go. Hopefully we get there. Here we go. Found the path again. Down the hill. Through the field. And up the other side. <laughs> More hills. As we walk through this field, we've got big and hill in the distance there. The top. So I've walked down the valley, around the back here, all the way around, and we'll have done a loop. Right, I'm back on the top of one of the sides of Big In Hill. There's a trackway there called Norheads Lane, which is no longer accessible by vehicle, uh, but it used to be a road from Norheads Manor House, the farm, where we will see shortly. It used to go out into the sort of lanes out the back of Big In Hill. Now, obviously, you have to go around a long way. Uh, but a lot of people use it to walk. Uh, this field looks like it's been ploughed recently. But I'm assuming the pathway goes along here. So I can see footprints, so that's where I'm going to go. And, and then I reckon there's probably two more, two and a half miles to go maybe, to the finish point. So I might stop shortly, have some lunch. Got some ramen noodles. So I just heat up some water. Give them a little whirl, chow them down, and then replenish the energy levels and crack on with the last bit. So this is the old road. At one point, many years ago, in the distance there, we can see the one of the big hangars at the airfield. So, it doesn't look too far away, but when you walk in it, it feels a lot further. So then you've got Big and Hilltop over there, and then the valley scoops around all behind these trees. And I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there you can see Canary Wharf right in the distance. So we're actually not too far from London. We are part of London, London Borough Bromley. But occasionally, different points being where you can see the capital. Now at this point of the walk, the main route goes this way, but if 
you want to do a shortcut and miss out the really hilly bit around there, you can go that way and it takes you back into Biggin Hill. But of course, I'm going to go the proper way, the full way, and head off through these woods and down and up the other side. In these woods, there's like man made structure with what looks like dials to turn so water comes out, maybe some sort of well. There's a bit of a pipe there sticking up. Could, yeah, could be an old well from the farm up here. <clears throat> oh, and a random dog in the distance. <laughs> So that area we've just been through is part of the old Norheads farm estate. Uh, big farm, it used to be a massive manor house there. Way, it was close, nearly fell over. Uh, a lot of it's been sort of redeveloped now, there's houses up there. Um, but yeah, unfortunately that's what happens with areas like this. Old farms get bought up and sold on to developers. Uh, old buildings get knocked down, but I suppose that's part of development really. It's a shame really, but there we go. We're in the final stretch of the valley part of the walk. And that ahead of us is the airfield. And at the bottom of the hill there, you see a white car maybe going past, it's called Oakland's Lane. Where I've got to cross that, and there's a little line of trees, which I think the path goes through there and up that bank and then from there sort of work my way across back to Biggin Hill and then that is where the walk ends I'm probably not going to have some lunch now because I'm so close to the end there's no point so I'll go home and cook myself some dinner lunch, dinner, whatever I don't even know what time is <laughs> so yeah that's where I've just come from Here we go, crossing Oakland's Lane. And then I'm gonna go up this path and then follow a path below this tree line along this field. And as we come down here, you can see the field that I walked through ahead of us. And now I'm gonna cut through the houses and there's another path up here, which is the final sort of uphill uh, stint, which I think is got stairs on it. And then we head off through some woodlands called Jugs Woods, back to the finish point. Here we are in Jugs Woods. There is a information sign at the top. So I'll stop there, see what it says about these woods. It's just a little sliver of land in between the main road at the top and houses in the valley down there. Here we go, here's the sign. Jug Hill, lots of different foliage in here and animals, butterflies, but 
it does say a little bit of information about it, which I'll read to you. So, the wooded hillside between Main Road and Sunnyvale Avenue, now known as Jug Hill, is a borough grade two conservation area. In spite of the very steep slope, this land was used for agriculture up until the 1950s, since when it was evolved naturally into its present form. During the Second World War, Jug Hill was used as a site for anti-aircraft emplacements. So there you go. The people here with big guns during World, World War II. But this is the final stairs going up. And then home sweet home. Oh, feel the burn. Never ending stairs. <laughs>